So by now you've probably figured out that this tutorial is the third in my series and is about keyframing masks. So let's get started. First I'm just going to make a simple title. Doesn't matter how big it is or where it is or any of that. I just like to make things centered. So now let's make sure that's at frame one. We're going to see this button here on our toolbar. It looks like a little rectangle with a smaller one inside of it. You're going to want to click and hold on that button, and you see a drop-down menu with a bunch of different types of masks. You can see things like bezier, circle, and freehand masks, but in this case we just want the simple rectangle mask. So you're going to draw by clicking and dragging over your title here. And then you're going to want to go into your inspector while the mask is selected and click the box that says invert mask. Now you can see that our text is gone completely. But we don't want just a blank screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our playhead back to frame one. We're going to click this button. It has a red circle with a diamond and that's keyframe record. So you click that. You're going to want to advance the playhead 30 frames or however long you want it and we're now going to make our mask shrink until all of our text is visible and you can just click this button again to turn off keyframe recording and if we select the project in our timeline you'll see that the text is slowly revealed so that's just a basic mask but there are far more complicated ways to use masks. So in this example of a mask, I have a clip over here of me throwing a machine gun shell into the air. However, let's just trim this down to where we want it. I also did this on a green screen, so you'll be seeing this footage for a chroma keying tutorial soon. So right about here is where we want the footage to start. And then there is where we want the footage to end. So you can see how my hand is in the shot here. And seeing as the machine gun shell is about the same color as my hand, keying is out of the question. So let's bring this back to the beginning. In order to fix this, we can use a bezier mask. Now this is a far more advanced way of keyframing a mask. So first we're going to click and hold on this button and scroll down to bezier. Next let's just make some points around this. And now we're going to go through and it's out of the shot so you're going to have to drag these points to match its new location. And it's constantly moving, so you basically just have to go through and keep on moving these points to follow it. So now that I'm done keyframing my mask, you can see how the mask follows it, but you can't quite see it if I just play it because it's not rendered. So let's just render that up. And you're going to see how it goes up and then goes down and follows the shotgun shell. So now that we've done that, we can just bring on our keyer filter, which is under this filters button in the toolbar. And we just click keyer here and it automatically determines what color it's trying to get rid of. And so now we have a nice basic shell going up and going back down. So that is an example of a bezier mask. So that's about it for my masks tutorial. You may have noticed how I didn't cover the circle freehand or B spline mask. And that's for good reason. This tutorial is already several minutes long, and these masks are all pretty much the same thing. You just have to experiment to see which one best suits your needs. 
If you want the footage that I used to do the keyframing masks, I can send it to you through email because I will have a chroma keying tutorial later that uses the same footage.